The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. What a great privilege it is for us to know that our Lord has first descended into the lower parts of the earth. After his burial, he went to tell to those confined fallen angels about the victory in the angelic conflict. Though they tried to manipulate the pure genes, and we could stand firm as true humanity in Christ in this angelic conflict. Not only just descending into the lower parts of the earth, furthermore our Lord also ascended high unto the throne of heaven. And this heaven, he just came back again to give us so that each and every believer could be filled with pleroma, and he made us, every believer, to be kings and priests by filling each and every believer with the, the spiritual quality of superior one, pleroma status, to fill up the gap, to fill up the deficiency with the pure certain quality of spiritual realm. And he has filled up so that now each and every believer can be alikainiketesis, he has filled up now that each and every believer under the polity of privileges given to us is been termed out as toga, whereas is the manhood in Christ. And now the believer can enjoy really this pleroma status in Christ. We are not of any deficiency. We have been endowed with a great spiritual quality of all time, which was never existing in the past nor which will ever exist in the future. But only right now in this church age, this quality has been given for you and for me as gracious beneficiary things. That's why every believer has at least one, minimum one, spiritual gift. And after the completion of canon, we do have the permanent spiritual gifts into force, not the temporary. Miracles, healings, and tongues have been seized long back. In fact, even indeed, including the discerning of the spirits. I wish the sending of the spirits could be still now in this church age. Because the false teachers were entering the pulpit. And if any man could have the descending of the spirit, he would tell, this is right or wrong. But Lord has seemed fit for us to reveal everything in his word. Lord has seemed fit to give us not just the spirit of discernment, but he has made Lord God the Holy Spirit to indwell in us so that when you are being there in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, you can know, you can learn, you can understand what is the true purpose of Jehovah in giving us these gifts of permanent realm as we grow up. To fill up the deficiency with certain true quality is nothing but the spiritual quality of Lord God the Holy Spirit controlling our life. The pleroma status is nothing but we need to look upon and understand this alakeni ketesis under the polity of privileges and we need to leave behind a life that is absolutely required for the praise of the glory of Jehovah so that we could come out to be great kings for God of our chief archon ruler of Christ. That's why he said in a simple parable, ten minus in the ten minus, good you became to have authority. It is not dunam is there which has been used, but it has been used as exousias. Exousias means you need to qualify for that. And that qualification is the time that is given for us on this earth to be prepared. While we are qualifying, we do have certain trials, temptations, certain failures. But Lord has given for us to know what is rebound. Lord has given for us to understand what is the reality of the word. Lord has even explained for us the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that now no longer we need to live under the flesh, but we need to live in the spirit. We need to walk in the spirit and yield unto the fruit of the spirit. 
how many great lessons the scripture teaches to us under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But then too, men go to look upon cults, heresies, apostasy, and not to look upon the true divine light. 1 John 1, 5 so dogmatically claims to the point, in him there is no darkness at all. But people love darkness rather than truth and call themselves as Christians. If they would have really loved the light of Jehovah, they would have started the ice concept of teaching in the pulpits long back, isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word with a true dispensing technique of dispensations. They would have started it long back. The first Bible being formed and given to popery, they would have changed the truth. They wouldn't have changed the truth, but they would have followed the truth in light. And they went on to practice evil, manipulation done under the influence of Satan in their thinking, gaining superiority and showing them that which doesn't count at all, which is an alien to Bible. That's why the Protestant fathers who came out, they taught us the doctrine. William Carey, William Kelly, C.H. McIntosh, H. Ironside, the followers of those Protestant teaching line in the 19th, in the 20th century, the latest one, Robert Bunker Thieme, the founder and theological president, uh, the theological seminary president, Mr. Lewis Perry Chaffer. They laid down their lives. The Schofield Reference Bible, which ruled for 100 years. They laid down their teachings to know and to give importance for doctrine, to understand that Lord has filled, and He has filled every believer with this certain quality of spiritual realm. He didn't go and tell, you have to do this, you have to work this. No, he filled you, and now you have to accomplish it. Already you have attained your destination, now you have to just follow the footsteps to attain it, to reach it. The destination has been given for you, Alekhanikatesis, holy and blameless, so that you should be now crude, unreproachable at the judgment seat of Christ. We cannot change the truth into your life. You cannot be in dark and say that I'm having fellowship with light. You have to come to the light and walk in the light. That's what the doctrine teaches to us. Our Lord, when he went to the lower parts of the earth, he ascended above one, again into the heavens, and he has filled every believer so that they could be filled with this certain quality of church age, realm of spiritual truth. That's what Ephesians 4, 9 and 10 teaches to us. That certain quality is a spiritual quality, dear brother, and you believe it, like it, take it or not. You understand this or not. It is my duty to proclaim, and I'm proclaiming it to you. Better you can understand this, and go upon to move to learn that spiritual quality and execute this protocol plan of God in the three stages of the subtle spiritual life, followed by spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy, the spiritual maturity, and our desire to know the doctrine from ice concept, that is isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. Understand this, you have the quality already. Think over this, we shall continue in the next day. Father, grateful for the privilege of us going to fellowship through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, lay us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.